Welcome to another video by Lane Creations, Log Analysis Made Easy. I want to give a special call out to all those who have uh, supported this channel, particularly my members and those who uh, subscribe and pass this channel on to others. I really appreciate the support and thank you for your help in growing this channel. Today we're going to talk about one of the queries I get asked about a lot is save searches. And this has come a long way from Splunk in the past. Uh, I'm running 9.03, so basically Splunk 9 on has this. There were some little gotchas with the way that the REST API worked, but we're going to show you, I get this asked, what are the safe searches that my users are have on the system? And one of the biggest problems we used to have was the ability to see private saved searches. The concept is when you make a safe search, you can make one private, you can make it shared in an app, and you can make it shared globally. Private could not be viewed even by administrators. That's changed. I'm not sure exactly what happened. It, I don't recall it being an eight, but it is definitely a nine. And so I'm going to show that now. So there's a lot of different options. But what we want to know is the REST API. There's Splunk documentation for every REST API, but the concept is you can get to the comp files that without having to be in the command line. You don't need to have command line access to see the values in the comp files. You just have to know how to call the REST API. And the general gist behind a uh, the REST API, put this dash in, is this part here that I'm highlighting. You're going to have, a, if you use the REST command in Splunk, you'll just do a slash services NS. That's the command to say I'm going to use the REST API. And then you have these two slashes. We'll talk about these more in detail, but the first slash is to filter by users. A dash is a wildcard saying give me all the users. And then the next one is apps. What app do I want to search in? And again, slash is the default that is the uh, would be the wild card. And then they happen to use, then they'll call out the config file. In this case, it's save searches. I'll do other videos where I'll go through more REST APIs, but the point is you call that and I can use Splunk local server or not. This basically says, hey, look, in this situation, only look locally. If you're on a distributed search head, you could go and search multiple machines and get back uh, all their results. Anyway, uh, that's cool. I'm going to show the original concept of an API. That's the concept I can send things through the internet. So it's the same principle. But what you want to do is you want to put the HTTP or HTTPS, the IP address of your Splunk server, the management port, which is usually by default 8089. And then you put services not service NS, but services, and then it's the save searches. It's really, really similar to the REST API, but the basic difference is you don't do the slash and slash. But if I go ahead and I put this in, it'll bring back an API call, and I can see all of the fields associated with in a web interface. It's nice. It doesn't give a lot of customization, but this gives you uh, the ability to view. Um, I have already viewed this page, so my credentials are cached. But when you try this, it will ask for your credentials. This is not just available to anyone. You have to have the right credentials to be able to make the API calls, which a user and a power user, I mean, sorry, a admin and a power user have access to the API. So you can go ahead and do that. Now, how much of the API is restricted? Power users, for example, can't go edit the API. But, and there are ways to edit it. We're not going to cover that. We just want to cover safe searches. So I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to run this command. I'm going to keep it at its default. I just want to get all my safe searches on the local instance of Splunk, and we'll take this off. One of the things I always tell people to do is to run this head one and a transpose command. And I'm not going to do it first, because I'll, I'll show you why, what happens. If I don't put that on, I run this rest command. There we go. Look how it keeps going and going and going and going and going and going to the right. There are so many fields, it becomes very difficult to actually read it. So what I do is I say, give me head one. But head one by itself is not going to cut it. I want the transpose command. The transpose command will flip everything from running left to right to up and down. So all those fields I saw scrolling have gone 
up and down. That's why I want head one, is you don't want this to go 300 columns to the right, which would be row one indicates your first machine, then you have a row two for your second your second save search, your third ser save search, et cetera. I'll, I'll take the head one off so you can see it. It's still better with the transpose command, but it's difficult to read because you got to go to each row and then you go to the next page and then you got their rows. And so what I found the easiest thing to do, just do a head one. Grab the first field that you need. This will give me the fields, the field names. Give me an example of what the field names are and what I'm looking for. And you still see there's eight, 11, 14, 18 pages. It might be more or less, depending on whether you're using enterprise security and other tools that add more features onto your safe search. But it's basically gonna take every stanza you can use in your safe search and then they're gonna be fields. You can see those values. And as I start to go through them, I can see, oh, look, there's the EA ACL app. Maybe that's useful. And so I'll say, maybe I wanna know the app name. And so I'll go, EAI colon ACL dot app. And that's what I'll do is I'll just build a little list of the fields that I find are useful that I want to return back. And I found the search, which is the search and the query, the title, the name of the query, the save search, who owns it, and the app that it exists in. Cool. Now I can turn this on. Which, by the way, if you don't know what's commenting the code out, it's three uh, back ticks, which on a normal keyboard is right above your tab and the one button if you hold down uh, you hold that you can just go and press that and you put three of them in a row one two three and then you go to where you want to close it and that becomes comments all right I take now I don't need a head one and I don't need the transpose command if I run it like this I now have a manageable amount of uh, columns Search is still massive, but whatever. It's something I can work with. And I would probably change my search in this situation. Just move it to the end. Because search can get really large depending on how it displays them on the rows. And I want I want to see this stuff always. And then I can always scroll over if I'm more interested in what's going on in that search. So now I can see all these fields. And I can do searches like this. As soon as you do here, you can say search uh, EAI ACL owner does not equal nobody. Let's do something like that. That's not going to work because I didn't write ACL dot, it's ACL dot owner. And now I get less results and all of these are things done by not the nobody owner. I can choose the app, and I can, so you can do all sorts of searching. As soon as you run that REST API, then you can run a search on it. But let's go and do this. Uh, remember I talked about the fact that you could do searches here and here. The first one is for user, and the second one is for search. So let's come in here and we're gonna go grab all the ones to do a search. I put that in there. I now don't need to do a search command. And we can see that it didn't do what we thought it was going to do. It's got some, that's one of the reasons I tend not to use that. You can use the filter. For some reason, you're gonna see I have less searches than 65. If I go back, I'll have more searches than 65, I think. Yeah, I have 367. So it did some form of filtering, but it doesn't do exactly what you would have thought it did. I also found that I can go here and I can put nobody in. And I will get back queries from people who are not nobody. May not find that immediately. All right, let's change that just so I can make it really simple to show that. But notice I got 362 results again. That was pretty much the entire list. Search EA I ACL owner does not equal nobody. In theory, if this was really filtering correctly, I get no results back, but I get the admin results. So don't trust the fact that these are supposed to filter everything out. 
um, they'll work, but they're not they're not perfect. They 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 do something, but they seem to not be a hundred percent. So I tend to rely on my Splunk searching. All right, now let me show you about the private user. So I've got another tab open. This is over here. I'm admin. We can see that I'm the administrator. Over here, I'm lame, and we're gonna make me a new search. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna make a new search. Save as report lame search two. Save. And I'm going to give it no permissions view. Okay, if I come in here and I go to settings, search reports and alerts, I'll see I have lame search one and lame search two, both owned by me in the lame training app. All right. Let's flip over to my other account, Administrator. I actually haven't tested this, so maybe they've changed this feature too. Um, if I go to Settings, I'm in the Lame Training app. And I go Searches and Reports. Let's do that on a different page. Here, Settings, Searches, Reports. I want to find everything owned by Lame. I can actually now see their private. That was not always a feature, so I am grateful that they have fixed that little uh, little thing. You used to not be able to see anybody's private um, queries, and but starting now with nine, it can be seen. So that's cool. If you couldn't see it, you can run that REST API, and we would see. Let's go ahead and put save searches here. Sorry, lame training training stats count by EAI ACL dot owner and we'll just take these out well notice there's lame and his two searches so we can see the stuff that's being done by lame We'll try lame. I doubt this will do much. See, we're still getting his, his report. We're getting all the other ones back. But that's not the point of what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to point out this doesn't work quite as well. That's why you use this queries. The fact is, I can see all of the queries being done by an individual. I want to see what he's doing. Let's do search EAI ACL dot owner equals lame and we're going to go post this back in there take this out and if you need to do an audit know what your uh, the safe searches that are being written by your uh, analyst there you go and i can see what the query is there are also in there you can see if they've got it scheduled the cron job things like that and so you can get that information that you need about a user really easy really quick from the rest api I hope this was helpful. I hope it helped you understand a few more capabilities. Again, this is the REST API is really helpful to pull this information back. This information wasn't always available. It is available if you come in now under settings, search reports and alerts, and you can come in and do individual filtering and find that. But again, then to see it, you'll have to go into each individual box. It's really nice to be able to have the ability to search, change. I can build reports. I could actually alert myself whenever an analyst builds a new search, a new uh, safe search, because I could build a baseline. I got baseline, and I could say, hey, take a, just look at this new, and is there any new searches in there? So there's a lot of things you can do with this that aren't available elsewhere. Anyway, I hope this is helpful. I hope this helps you move from being a lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja and that you keep coming back. Give me a big thumbs up. Push this channel out to your friends. Uh, appreciate the support and thanks so much.